Hi there, welcome to uh, HCI Quiz 1, Hints and Tips. You may be asking, who am I? I am uh, Dr. Sandra Zip, Associate Professor in Computer Science at the Hawaii Pacific University. Um, I've taken Scott Clemmer's uh, HCI course a couple of times before, and uh, I've been integrating that uh, with Scott's permission into my own mobile design course at Hawaii Pacific University. Um, and so uh, this is the week that uh, Quiz 1 is going to be due, I believe. Uh, we've got Quiz 1 here uh, due at the end of this week. Um, my students in my mobile design course have taken this quiz, and uh, so some of you out there. Um, and so I thought I'd put together this little kind of, um, what should we call it, a sort of a taking quizzes review, um, trying to give you some, some help, obviously. Uh, one of the things, key thing about the quiz, uh, you know, we've got the honor code, the Coursera uh, and Stanford honor code, that uh, you know, the, the answers are all your own work. So I'm not going to be giving uh, any answers away here, uh, absolutely not. Um, but I thought, you know, you know, potentially there are things that, that about quizzes that can be tricky, and uh, you know, so one of the things, uh, you know, being capable to read the questions. Um, I've I've done quizzes like this, lots like this before. Um, took me five attempts uh, to get this get this all um, up to the the full the full marks. A little embarrassed there, I should you know uh, have greater mastery of the material. But it's um, you know, uh, there's the quizzes themselves are interfaces and uh, I think one of the dangers I certainly have is you know I'm skimming through and I think oh I should know the answer to this oh yes I read this I read this and maybe you know I, d I miss reading you know the exact detail of one of the um, one of the possible answers uh, you know that's e either way can, can get very confusing so you know that's kind of a key thing with quizzes you maybe know already uh, but maybe even that for those of us who you know think that quizzes are our business uh, can, can often skip over uh, is is not reading precisely the, the you know information for example here about you know this is the material covered in these these particular lectures they're suggesting you know watch those first uh, there are also of course quizzes embedded in lectures one uh, you know in all of the lectures uh, like four lectures in, in each of the segments one two and three point one um, so you know do, do all of those example quizzes that's that's all that's all helpful on those uh, example quizzes uh, you know, feedback is given, and you can sort of have an explanation in some cases. Um, I think it's interesting to think about quizzes are actually a type of user interface. Um, there is a sort of dialogue going on here between the designer of the quiz and all of all of those of us taking the quiz. And the designer of the quiz is kind of trying to probe, uh, you know, our knowledge about things. Um, they may also be trying to help us uh, learn uh, things at the same time. Uh, and they may have different goals, as a lot of different stakeholders. Uh, in any given in any given quiz, um, and so a lot of the problems that one might have with a quiz, to a certain extent, may come down to user interface issues. Um, in the in the ideal world, perhaps, you know, the be the people trying to assess us would be able to sort of reach into our brains and just know whether we'd mastered a bit of knowledge or not. They're probably less interested in whether we can actually navigate a particular a particular interface. Um, but, uh, you know, so the quizzes are sort of out there. One of the key choices that the designer of the quiz has is about how much feedback to give the, the user. Clearly in the, the earlier video lectures, um, you know, Scott's given us uh, immediate sort of feedback, you know, you get it wrong, you get told, told why, um, those not counting towards, um, you know, final grades or certificates. Um, in this, in this, this setup here, as those of you who've taken the quiz already will have noticed, um, you, you can sort of do it. It will tell you how many points out of three you get, but it won't tell you which thing you got got wrong, and um, that's an you know, interesting pedagogical choice. I'm very pleased to see, actually, um, it's mentioned in the forums that uh, once the due date is finished, all the full, you know, what's right and what's wrong uh, will be will be revealed. Which I think is very useful uh, from a learning point of view. The, um, you know, one of the things we we can ask is, you know, uh, you know, is the goal of the quiz really about student learning? Is it about is it is it assessment? Um, it's uh, I think you know I I I've I've been frustrated in other situations where you know quizzes uh, there's this there's this conflict between wanting to be able to as an instructor reuse a quiz many times and so you know giving out the answers is maybe is maybe counterproductive um, when although maybe that ultimately would be the the, the best way for students to learn but uh, uh, very pleasingly you know, uh, Scott is is going to give us uh, the full details the full run through of all of this uh, once the once the due date. Has, has gone. I think that the um, the key things I wanted to hit on here is that the ch the challenge with things like with quizzes and exams and so on is is really one of vocabulary. Um, it's about you know the the words and what do they mean? You know what do we think the word um, focus 
is or the word prototype is or these different things. Um, and you might say, you know, that, that's one thing you might say, oh, well, you know, I just didn't, I wasn't sure what that word meant. And, and that's what, you know, what one can argue over the meanings of, of words. Um, one of the challenges, I guess, in some ways in learning any new subject is, is learning the vocabulary of the people, who, the, the, the practitioners of that subject. And so, uh, you know, it, it's at least reasonable, I guess, to want to try and, you know, uh, for, for, I guess, let's say an instructor to bring their students towards uh, the plate, you know, the way in which words are used, the way in which the, you know, the, the meanings are used in that in that subject. Um, so, but that's that's often the thing that will trip us up on on quizzes is, oh, I thought that word meant this or whatever. And there is, um, I guess, depending upon your your background, uh, you know, I, I would suggest, suggest uh, there is a fuzzy nature to truth. Um, uh, I, I might like to see maybe in the future, rather than having checkboxes, which suggests a binary. Uh, yes or no answer is to have degrees. Um, there's a degree to which you know some things are true and, and, and less true, and so on. But uh, so that's I've sort of covered them, my points. I'm just gonna I'm gonna read through all of the questions just to kind of I don't, you know uh, sometimes it's difficult. You know you've got it all written down. So question one: uh, What are the advantages of paper prototypes over computer-generated pixel prototypes? Uh, so the paper prototypes being things that we've we've you know created using card and paper uh, versus computer generated pixel prototypes and the pixel interesting use of the, the term here uh, pixel uh, you know computer generated pixel prototypes is you know something where it's like a, a web page or something that's been even maybe it's done in, in Photoshop it's maybe not not an interactive page um, but so uh, we've got all so we've got this then a choice here so effectively we've got to choose um, each of the there's there's these four buttons here and we can check any any combination of them which means there's 16 different possible combinations here and you know which are the ones based on our particularly you know our understanding of how, having viewed the lectures previously uh, are, are true or not so both products do they keep the focus on the high level design uh, while it's easy to shift focus to kind of details with the pixel prototypes, uh, if you thought that this was an appropriate statement, you'd check that one. Uh, moving on, if paper prototypes are that they're often less expensive, faster, and easier to create and modify compared to computer-generated prototypes. You know, uh, again, there's, you know, there's there's sort of you may already have experience in the real world with paper prototypes with computer-generated pixel prototypes. You may have um, different uh, senses of you know, whether that is more true or less true or the opposite is true. Um, I guess one of the things, I mean, this is the, this is the funny thing. In some ways, you know, you want to be having a, a conversation with the instructor to, to, to get your point of view across. Of course, quizzes are not necessarily the best format to be doing that in. Uh, in some ways, I'd, you know, if you're, if the emphasis is on, shall we say, um, you know, you wanting to get the, the grade, the mark for this thing, uh, it may be, you know, even if you have strong feelings one way, one, way, one way or the other about whether these different things are true, um, maybe a good idea to refer to the, the video lectures to see, you know, what the instructor or the designer of the quiz thinks is true. Um, that, that can be a sort of dangerous game to get into. Um, I, I guess in the ideal world, ultimately one doesn't care about grades or certificates or any of these kinds of things, and you just, you know, make the assertions that you think are appropriate, you know, if you thought that was true, you'd, you'd, and you wouldn't worry about whether the designer of the quiz was thinking it was true or not. Um, but and that's a different route to go. Which you know, I mean, and who's to say which has uh, the more learning benefits? But let's let's move on. Uh, so there is another assertion that might or might not be true that paper prototypes separate issues of design from issues of implementation. Um, there is another one that paper prototypes usually allow designers to explore a broader range of ideas than pixel prototypes. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it'll be um, interesting to see uh, all of that. I guess when I orig originally was planning to record this, uh, I hadn't realized that um, there was going to be, a, you know, a complete sort of showing all the answers at the end of the day. And, and that, there'll be lots of, I'm sure, uh, good discussion around, around that. But I, you know, was keen to sort of talk through some of these things uh, to help you with the quizzes. Let's have a look at some of them. We've got question two here now related to uh, asking questions. Is, Let's say your friend is trying to understand how a software company decides when software is released and she interviews one of their engineers. She asks, at several companies, the CEO is completely in charge of the decision of when to release the software. How do you do it at your company? Um, and so now we've got another here, uh, 16 possible combinations of uh, true and false that we could select. So we could ask, what is true of your friend's interview question? Check all that apply. Um, again, fuzzy nature of truth, I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna petition for these things to be rather than binary yes, no, uh, checkboxes, that these should be sliding scales so that we can indicate a degree of truth of, uh, of all of these things. Um, but so we might say that this interview question is a leading question uh, since it suggests that the CEO should make the decision, uh, or, or maybe not. 
Uh, we could say this is a great question, since the interview establishes that she is an expert in the field. Uh, we might say that this is a wrong question, since it focuses the user on who makes the decision rather, on, rather than how the decision is reached. Uh, or we could say this is a great question. Uh, it provides the user context about the kind of answer that is expected. So again, we've got four, four statements, and uh, you might, I think uh, I certainly read on the forums about some people saying, "Is that how is this related to HCI?" I think this is, you know, it's about this process of, uh, you know, activity analysis. Um, definitely very relevant to trying to understand how people might use things, uh, and you know, it, it, it's all linked together. Do um, there was certainly uh, video lectures on um, interview techniques. Uh, that would be good uh, watching to help you with those. Uh, and then finally, question three, what is wrong with the following interview question? Do you like the word art feature of Microsoft Office? And again, we've got uh, you know these four checkboxes. Any four of these can be clicked in any combination, uh, all of them, none of them. Uh, so there's another 16 possibilities there. So check all that apply. The question elicits a binary uh, or, or a yes or no response. The question is too open-ended. The question assumes that the user has feelings about the word art feature of Microsoft Office, or the question is leading. Uh, or and or and or or and uh, anyway. Um, and uh, th there you go. That's it. Now, of course, as some of you will have realised as you um, you've got three chances to submit this for the for the grade. Um, as you click through and you get your combination of which you think are the true and untrue statements uh, in the context of each question, um, you'll then submit it and you'll see you'll get a score out of out of three. Um, and I guess it's per each of these it looks like it's maybe worth um, point, point 0.25. Um, but you won't be told uh, which one you got right and which one you got wrong. And so, uh, and that, that might be frustrating for some people um, who would like to get the immediate feedback. And that's one design for a quiz. Um, I think um, a decision has been made. I'm mean, obviously, uh, you know, Scott would have to talk to that. But um, that there is uh, value in providing a sort of a degree of feedback and then bringing you back to think about, you know, in more depth each of these each of these elements and so you know while uh, you might oh no I want to get exactly the you know the information and then you know you might be doing another submission and you get a diff another different answer so there's kind of you can get into sort of a numbers game which I guess I sort of partly did myself in order to finally get everything absolutely correct uh, in working out okay here was my previous two attempts and I said this on this blah, blah, blah. I mean it's it's kind of you know th this is always the danger when one has sort of gradings and certificates and so on as you're trying to, to kind of you know you end up sort of caring less about the content and more about what is it that I actually have to do in order to get, you know, the full the full marks. And, and that's a shame. It's something that I think, you know, is an ongoing ongoing struggle for, for every for every instructor. Um, you know, there it's fantastic that there's all this material is available for all of us uh, to share and explore. Uh, and I'd certainly encourage you to the extent possible um, to focus on the on the on the context and the ideas um, in in comparison to, you know, how do I exactly get exactly the the, the the full marks um but uh yeah i'm looking forward to uh this weekend when uh as i understand it the um i think we had in the, the quiz thing what did they say precisely uh yeah details uh so we got um catherine from the staff was saying details about the breakdown of the answers and explanations will be available after the quiz due date so uh, we can have lots of good discussion about that uh, all right uh, bye for now